All right, problem number 28 from the refraction homework, Snell's Law of Refraction. We're looking for the distance D, the separation distance of these two parallel lines, or in other words, this little segment here, how far apart are those two parallel lines. We have a, a, a ray of light that's incident upon the air crown glass interface. It refracts right there, and if I draw the normal or highlight the normal the angle of incidence there is 20 degrees All right we're looking for the angle of refraction which is right over inside the crown glass applying Snell's law straight straight up is just n sub 1 sine theta sub 1 equals n sub 2 sine theta sub 2, n sub 1 being air, index of refraction 1.00, sine of 20 degrees. You have to look up crown glass. Crown glass has an index of refraction of 1.52, I believe. So we have equals 1.52 sine theta sub 2. If you go to your calculator, theta sub 2 comes out to be 13 degrees. That's an important number. I'm going to switch to blue for a second here. What I want to look at is this triangle right here. It's a right triangle. With that right triangle, the long skinny angle there is that 13 degree angle. I'm going to reconstruct that triangle over here. Now this is the the maybe maybe not the fastest, but one of the fastest way of solving this problem. Since I've done it or prepared my notes here, it's going to go a lot faster for me probably. Since I know the direct solution, that angle is 13 degrees. This distance on the bottom is I'm going to go to three sig figs, 2.00 centimeters. That's how far or how thick this crown glass is. So what I want to find is the hypotenuse. I'm going to call that H the hypotenuse of that triangle, and you'll see why in a few seconds here. There's a lot of geometry involved. In fact, what I've done so far is all the physics. Snell's law, the first time there, is really all the physics. The rest is just geometry. Yeah, it's just geometry. So right now, to find H, well, trigonometry, the right triangle tri uh, geometry, uh, use the cosine of 13 degrees equals the 2.00 over h. You saw for h, h comes out to be 2.05 centimeters. All right, it's an important number or a useful number as far as finishing off this problem. Here's what I'm going to do. If we extended the this red ray the incident ray that's at 20 degrees, the, the, the original ray, this ray right here, if, if it wouldn't continue straight, if it didn't bend onto that blue hypotenuse there, it would keep going. I'm going to make a dashed line. Parallel to the uh, ent uh, exiting ray over here, and we're trying to find that distance between them over here, well, anywhere, like on the left-hand side. We're finding the distance between those two parallel lines. So what I'm going to do now, and I think I'll use, well, I'll use black this time. I'm going to highlight a new triangle. I'm going I'm I'm to make three big dots here, well, two big dots. And then I'm going to draw a perpendicular to this spot over here. This short black segment once again is perpendicular to both those parallel lines that's my D it's the same as the D over here on the left and way up here on the right or anywhere between those two lines a perpendicular segment between those two lines will have the same length I'm going to call that D anyways if I take that spot right there and draw a triangle along there to there and with the same hypotenuse as this blue triangle I'll make it real thick so you can see it. This is the right angle. 
And I'm going to redraw that black triangle down here a little lower. So it has, um, well, basically that, that ray or segment, that's D. And then, so there's the right angle. Okay, so let me make it a little thicker once again, like it is in a diagram. There's the hypotenuse. All right, now this right here, H, is the same as this H over there because they share a hypotenuse. Even though they're not the same triangle, they share a hypotenuse. And what I'm looking for is this D right here. That's what I'm ultimately trying to figure out, how far apart those two lines are. Well, if you go back to your geometry, and I'm going to switch to the next page again, and come back to this diagram because I need to erase everything and show you something. Let me pause for a second. Here's a clean diagram. And here's a theorem you may remember from geometry. But if I highlight this line and this line without using any bending right now, those two lines, we have the 20 degree angle, angle of incidence, and then these are called vertical angles. This angle would be 20 degrees. But it includes the 13 degree angle that we determined by Snell's law on the previous page and therefore this angle is 7 degrees. I didn't really draw a good scale diagram but 7 plus 13 is 20 degrees. And that 7 degree angle is actually the small angle of that black triangle I just drew. And I'll highlight that black triangle again. where the right angle is there. And I'll just keep going with this diagram. So the triangle in question goes like this, goes like this. And we have H, which is 2.05 centimeters. That's what we determined on the previous page. We have the right angle there. Now we know that the angle, this thin angle, is 7 degrees. And we're looking for D. Well, now we can just use the sine, the sine of 7 degrees equals D over the 2.05. And that's our final calculation here. D turns out to be 0 0.25 centimeters, basically 2.5 millimeters if you want to convert. Don't have to. But that's our answer. That's how far apart those two parallel lines are. Or in other words, that's how far the emerging ray over here on the right-hand side in the air, coming out over here in the air, how far it's deviated from the entering ray, the initial in incident ray. That's why things look bent in water many times when you put a pencil in glass and look at it from the side. Things bend and they look like they're not connected. Uh, Snell's law of refraction causes or explains the angles at which light bends as it enters or leaves different transparent mediums.